Hey, how's it going there, player? Tank Dempsey here from Call of Duty Zombies. In today's video, three friends of mine and myself are gonna be telling you all about the unique weapons that you can find within the world of Fallout 3. To my trusted ally and zombie slaying friend, Rick Doffin, he's gonna be covering all the unique energy weapons that can be found within the Fallout 3 game. Another good friend of mine, Arnold Schwarzenegger, is going to be covering all the unique melee weapons found within Fallout 3. To another friend of mine, Dragon Ball Z Zone Broly is going to be teaching you all about the unique unarmed weapons that can be found within Fallout 3. And I, Tank Dempsey, am going to be covering all the unique big guns and small guns that can be found within Fallout 3. Hey boys, let's show these new Wastelanders and these Fallout 3 vets how it's done, shall we? Oorah! <laughs> I guess I'll start things off with A321's plasma rifle. Now A321's plasma rifle is carried by Harkness and can be found within Rivet City. And now the weapon can be received by the player through two possible endings of the replicated man quest. Depending if you want good karma or bad karma. A321's plasma rifle is an upgraded plasma rifle. It deals 50 damage at max energy weapons and condition and has a critical percent multiplier of 2.5. The rifle is also also durable with an item HP of 1200. Each attack from A321's plasma rifle in batch uses 25 points and the rifle has a small weapon spread of 0.2. I guess it's my turn to tell you about Ant Sting. Now right now I'm going to tell you that Ant Sting can be received when you complete the mission Superhuman Gambit. You must side with the Ant Agonizer and give her the mechanist costume for the weapon. And you need to make your way over to Canterbury Commons. Ant Sting poisons those injured by it, dealing an additional 4 damage every second for 10 seconds. Because poison damage stacks, rapidly hitting an opponent outside of VATS can increase Ant Sting's DPS to very high levels. After attacking 12 times within 4 seconds, its actual DPS rises to 90. However, most enemies will already be defeated before Ant Sting can pass this turning point. This effect makes this one of the most powerful melee weapons in the game. Alright player, now it's time to talk about the Black Hawk Magnum. Now the Black Hawk Revolver can be obtained by asking Agatha for a reward after giving her the sheet music book during completion of the quest, Agatha's Song. A word of warning there, player. Be nice to the old lady. If you don't, she's not going to give you the weapon. A sheet music book can also be found in Vault 92 where you find the violin for Agatha. The sheet music book can be found within the living quarters in the bathroom of the men's quarters, inside the closed bathroom stall, and on the ground next to the toilet. Like the standard Scope 44 Magnum, Black Hawk is a powerful, accurate sidearm. It has no recoil when looking down the scope and firing. This is one of the, if not the most, best hand cannon you can get in the base version of the game. Now it's time for me to tell you about the Board of Education. The melee weapon can be found in the clifftop shacks inside the abandoned shack east of the bridge, under the bed. You'll know when you see it because there's a skeleton holding it in its hand. It is composed of a plank of wood with nails hammered through it like all other nail boards found throughout the capital wasteland. Although not a highly damaging weapon, it has a faster attack than the standard nail board, meaning it does more damage per second. Unlike common nail boards, the Board of Education actually has a chance to score a critical hit. Are you wanting to fry any enemy you come up against? Then may I suggest the Burn Master. Now the Burn Master is found in the Franklin Metro Utility along with some flamer fuel. In order to get to the Franklin Metro Utility, you need to find Falls Church Metro. Without the Pyromaniac perk and the Broken Steel add-on, this is the most powerful flamer in the game. Another tip there, player. If you want to get this weapon even easier, I suggest equipping the Ghoul Mask. Why equip the ghoul mask, you say? Because the following area where you find the burn master is filled with ghouls. Alright, now let's go talk about Butch's Toothpick. Butch's Toothpick is a unique variant of the Switchblade. As you've probably guessed by now, the weapon can be found on Butch, your old bully back in Vault 101. But in order to acquire the weapon, you must first complete Trouble on the home front. You can either pickpocket the weapon off of his character, or you can finish Trouble on the home front and visit Butch over in Rivet City. Make sure your karma level is on neutral so he can join your group. When asked to look through his inventory, simply take the weapon out of his inventory. Butcher's Toothpick is roughly twice as powerful as any ordinary switchblade, and it can be repaired using regular switchblades. Now if you're wanting a 10mm pea shooter, then may I recommend Colonel Autumn's 10mm pistol. Now the weapon is carried by Colonel Autumn during the Waters of Life quest, and can be taken from his inventory after he falls to the ground near the door. Now in order to do so, you the player needs to directly face the body with the cursor on it in first person view. 
then switch to third person view and rotate the camera by roughly 180 degrees. Doing so will show the search prompt for Autumn's corpse. Note that this is the only chance to obtain this weapon and it will not spawn during the Take It Back quest later on in the game. The weapon does more damage and critical damage than the regular 10mm pistol and it also has a higher value and item health. Once you obtain the weapon from Colonel Autumn, it is at 100% condition. Hello there my friends, it's the good rock to Edward Richtoff and Funch again and now I'm here to tell you about Colonel Autumn's laser pistol. The little laser pistol can be found on Colonel Autumn in the Jefferson Memorial Rotunda during the main quest, Take It Back. Now if the Broken Steel DLC is installed, it is replaced by a different variant. Otherwise it is fully automatic, uses energy cells, uses very few action points, and has a 30 round capacity. Now as I said before, if Broken Steel is installed, then it will no longer be fully automatic. Sorry, but it's still a very unique laser pistol. Alrighty, this is what I call a fantastic fantastic big gun. May I introduce to you, Eugene. Now the unique minigun known as Eugene can be obtained from completing the Riley's Rangers quest and asking for it as a reward, or by pickpocketing or killing Brick in the Statesman Hotel or the Ranger compound. I leave it up to you. This upgraded minigun has 50% greater durability than standard miniguns and such greater firepower. It can be acquired as a quest reward or pickpocketed as its condition varies. And of course, the weapon can be repaired with normal miniguns. Moving on to something with a little bit more more of a blast. We now move on to the experimental Merv. This thing makes quite the kaboom. At least that's what Richtofen would say. I think you means the kaboom. That's right, Richtofen, just like that. This unique fat man can be found at the National Guard Depot. Now, player, in order to acquire this weapon, you need to complete the unmarked quest known as Keller Family Refuge. Now, you as the player need to acquire five hollow tapes that are scattered throughout the Capital Wasteland here in Fallout 3. One of the hollow tapes can be found just north of the VAPL 58 power station. Now, just follow the power line north and you will find a pylon shack. Inside the pylon shack you will find shelves and on the shelves on the bottom you'll find the holotape. Another holotape can be found at the hollowed moors cemetery. Just inside the church on a podium you'll find the tape. A third holotape can be found at the grisly diner. The holotape can be found in the back on a desk. Beware there's landmines scattered everywhere in the back. A fourth holotape can be found at Rockbreaker's last gas just up top on the sniper shack. Inside in the abandoned shack on the workbench you'll find the tape. And finally a fifth hollow tape can be found at the Anchorage Memorial. Across the river, there's a semi-truck and a tent behind it. Inside the tent on the table is the fifth Keller tape, along with the Wasteland Captive. After acquiring all five of these hollow tapes, report back to the National Guard Depot. Make your way down to the bunker as followed. Fun fact, did you know that you could reach the power switch this way? After opening the bunker door, deal with the enemy, and then make your way further down. Once you make it further down, open up the armory door and enjoy the spoils. Find the big door, enter the code from the killer transcripts, make your way into the bunker, and you will find the experimental Merv. As well as a nasty glowing van! Hey, Richtofen, this is my weapon. Get out of here. Yarr, it's time for yet another melee weapon. And of course, I'm talking about Fox's Super Sledge. Now, unfortunately, you can only acquire this weapon one time within the entire game. Recruit the companion Fox within Vault 87. Yarr, and as soon as you do, access his inventory and take his Super Sledge. It's time to talk about yet another energy weapon. And of course, I'm talking about the Fire Lance. This unique version of the alien blaster can be found, well, unfortunately, at a random encounter. This random encounter is known as the Unidentified Flying Debris. Now, unfortunately, this encounter can happen in various areas around the capital wasteland. I, because I'm such a good doctor, I will be showing you some areas where you can find this encounter. You can find this unique encounter over by the Super Duper Mart. You can find this unique encounter over by the Anchorage Memorial. Uh, you can find this unique encounter just west of Vault Vanovan by this Highway Fork in the road. And another location you can find this unique encounter is over by Tenpenny Tower, just next to a ruined building. A word of warning though. I recommend saving just far enough away from each location. That way if you don't like what you get from the unique encounter, you can always restart your save. Also, if this unique encounter has already happened and you have no idea what it was, I'm sorry, you're out of luck. <laughs> Finally, it's my turn. I'm here to tell you all about Fisto. 
a unique power fist. Just like my fist, it packs a punch. I think you mean pack a punch, Broly. Whatever, I call it packs a punch. This unique power fist can be found at MDPL 13 Power Station. It is just northwest of Minefield. It can be found inside the power plant on the top floor, next to a terminal on a desk. However, inside the power plant, there are multiple feral ghouls. And depending on the player character level, one may also encounter multiple feral ghoul roamers, glowing ones, and with broken steel installed, feral ghoul reavers. <laughs> Trust me though, it's well worth the wait acquiring Fisto. It is now time to move on to the Highwayman's friend. Now in order to find the Highwayman's friend, it'll be sitting on a shelf in Dominic and Machete's house in Canterbury Commons. Don't worry, there's no comma loss for taking it. All you need to do is go into the garage as shown right here. Follow the path as you see before you. And once you reach the location, you will acquire the Highwayman's friend. The Highwayman's friend manages to dish out more damage than a normal tire iron, along with benefiting from its fast attack speed. However, it is two pounds heavier than the standard variant. It is time to talk about Jack. After the waters of Live Quest, Jack will appear in the Deathclaw Sanctuary on the body of a second dead enclave officer in the southern area of the cave. The body is surrounded by other dead bodies, including that of a giant ant on occasion. If all Deathclaws have previously been killed, then the officer will spawn with a very low amount of health, approximately two bars. As you probably know by now, Jack is a unique variant of the uncommon melee weapon, the Ripper. It is equal in power per single hit to its cousin, but has a higher potential damage rate due to its slight but noticeable boost to the critical hit rate. It also does an extra 50% damage against limbs. The higher critical chance increases the power of this weapon enormously because it hits over 30 times per second. The listed weapon damage is divided over the individual hits, but the critical bonus damage is not. This means every hit has a normal chance to critical and do the full critical bonus damage. If one performs a sneak attack critical with the breath of critical's perk while holding the weapon, they have the chance to do a brutal 60 plus damage hit 30 times a second. Lull. Dempsey, I believe it is your turn now. Well, as Arnold said, it's my turn now. You know, I have to say I'm quite a fan of this little beauty. Of course, I'm talking about Lincoln's Repeater. Good old Honest Abe. Lincoln's Repeater can be found in the Museum of History. Once you're inside the Museum of History, take a sharp left as soon as you reach the Woolly Mammoth. Now I'm going to make a brief warning here to you, player. The following two rooms are full of ghouls, as well as turrets, so be careful. As you make your way into the second room, deal with all the ghouls and the turrets. After doing so, look for a staircase. Go up the staircase and you'll be on the second floor. Look for the display case, and inside you'll find Lincoln's Repeater. Oorah! Lincoln's Repeater is a very high-powered lever-action rifle. It uses 44 Magnum rounds, making it the only rifle using that round in the base version of the game. It is also the strongest single shot precision rifle in the game, although it only has a times two critical multiplier and a very slow rate of fire. It lacks a scope, but it also has zero spread, which in turn means perfect accuracy. It also has a magazine capacity of 15 rounds and it is very effective at long range in vats. Rick Toffin, you take over. Ah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dempsey. Uh, this energy weapon is known as the Mesmatron. This unique weapon can be found over at Paradise Falls. The Mesmatron is given to the player by Grouse. He is the entrance guard over at Paradise Falls. In order to acquire the weapon, the player must engage in the quest strictly business. However, if you do not decide to start the quest, all the player needs to do is kill Grouse and loot the weapon off of his corpse. When used on the specified quest, non-player characters, it puts them into a hypertronic stupor, allowing the player character to rob and enslave them by putting a slave collar on them, and then sending them to Paradise Falls. It also appears to work on many other non-player characters, aside from the quest-related ones, but can simply send them into a berserk frenzy in which they turn hostile to the player and every other non-player character in the area. Occasionally, victims will run several steps before their heads explode. Hello there, Dempsey! I think it's time to talk about the mislauncher! Yeah, Richtofen, whatever. It's my turn anyway. As Richtofen said, this weapon is called the Miss Launcher. The Miss Launcher is located in a weapon storage room inside Fort Independence, near the center of the map on the bottom floor of the lower levels. The lock will always have to be picked, a 75 lockpick skill to be precise, on the front door. Unless, of course, Defender Rockfowl, Defender Morgan, or Proctor Kasdan are pickpocketed for the key. However, it is possible to avoid having to fight the inhabitants if the player character completes the unmarked quest out 
outcast collection agent, up to the point where Kazdan will trust the player, and in doing so, this will make the outcasts inside the fort friendly. Now, the Miss Launcher is a unique version of, obviously, the standard missile launcher. It is more comparable to a grenade launcher than a missile launcher, though, as it has an arcing flight. Standard missiles fired from this weapon do not fly. Instead, they give, like I said, an arc kind of an angle. In doing so, both the missile's explosives warhead and unusual solid rocket fuel are free to detonate together, increasing the missile's explosive damage potentially by 30%. A side effect is this also reduces the chances of giving away your position if fired from hiding, as compared with a regular missile launcher. Hey player, I highly recommend you use this weapon outside of VATS. It is time for me to take over once again there, Dempsey. Viewers, I am now here to tell you about Arkham's Razor. First off, the weapon can be found on Commander Jabsco at the Talon Company base in Fort Bannister. Arkham's Razor is stronger than the basic combat knife in raw damage by a total of three points. It is aesthetically identical to the normal variant. However, there is a more powerful combat knife out there. Don't worry, we'll get to it soon enough. Arr, Dempsey, do you mind telling the viewers here all about Old Painless? Arnold, I'd be happy to tell them about Old Painless. So, you want to know about Old Painless, do you? Well, for starters, the rifle can be found at the Republic of Dave. The location can be found in the northeastern section of the map. Old Painless is located inside the safe right next to Dave's chair. There are many ways to get inside the safe. You can simply kill Dave and loot the key off his corpse to open up the safe. You can take part in the unmarked quest known as Election Day, or you can acquire it through a dialogue option of passing a speech check during the quest. You gotta shoot him in the head. Unfortunately, no matter which choice you choose, you will lose karma when you acquire the weapon. Personally, I prefer to complete the Election Day unmarked quest. And when doing the quest, I prefer Rosie winning the election. That way you can see Dave walking away like a little baby. Now, Old Painless does slightly more damage per shot and has a higher rate of fire than the regular hunting rifle. It can be repaired with hunting rifles, making it easy to maintain due to its commonality. Old Painless is one of the few weapons with zero spread, meaning with a hundred small gun skill, non-vats, shots go exactly where they're aimed in at. Hey, Richtofen! Arnold, make some room. Broly can't get through. And I would highly advise not making him angry. Thank you so very much, Air Dempsey. Now I'm here to tell you about Plunkett's valid points. First off, I'm gonna tell you right now that you need to have the Lawbringer perk. You cannot acquire this weapon without that perk. The valid points are dropped by Junders Plunkett. And he's found on the Arlington House and the Arlington Cemetery. Once inside the house, just go into the basement and do whatever you want to acquire the weapon. <laughs> Plunkett's Valid Points are a unique version of the Spike Knuckles. It inflicts three more damage per hit than the regular set of Spike Knuckles, and has double the chances of critical hit. The Spike Knuckles only have the standard chance at criticals. I'll be back momentarily. I have to calm down. <laughs> While we wait for Broly to calm down, the good doctor will tell you where the next weapon is. On to Protectron's gaze. Now for starters, this weapon's location is at the Robot Repair Center, just a little south of Canterbury Commons. Now during the Superhuman Gambit, the player must side with the Mechanist, and he or she must fork over the Antagonizer's armor to the Mechanist. And in doing so, the Mechanist will award the player with Protectron's gaze. Now, Protectron's gaze acts as a miniature laser shotgun that fires a fairly tight spread of five laser beams while expending only one energy cell. It has a slightly slow rate of fire and a significantly smaller magazine. It looks like it's your turn there, Arnie. Thank you so much, Rick Darfin. Now, viewer, it is my responsibility to tell you all about the repellent stick. First off, the weapon can be found within Megaton. Yarr, the weapon is obtained from Moira Brown at Crater Side Supply. During the quest Wasteland Survival Guide, upon completing the Morat portion of the Wasteland Survival Guide quest, if the optional objective of using the repellent on seven more mole rats is fulfilled, the Lone Wanderer can keep the stick for future use. The repellent stick is a simple wooden stick with a mole rat repellent, which consists of a combination of jet and psycho. The stick is exceptionally effective against mole rats as one hit causes an allergic reaction on mole rats, causing their bodies to smoke and their heads to explode after five seconds. If used on any creature other than a mole rat, it will still cause the smoking effect, though it won't cause them to explode. 
old. Now on to the Reservist Rifle. Hey, uh, Arnie, that's, uh, that's my job. Now, the Reservist Rifle can be found at the Dickerson Tabernacle Chapel. But be warned, there's an enemy known as the Drifter who carries this weapon. Now, unfortunately, he's above the player when they enter that location. Now, the only way to acquire the weapon is by killing the Drifter, obviously, and either having the weapon fall down or a big chunk of the body. That way, you can loot the weapon off the corpse. For all you players out there who lack the ability to save your game, I highly suggest you save before entering this location. Now, the Reservist Rifle has plus 50% more of a durability than the regular Sniper Rifle, preserving the damage and critical rate more effectively. It also has a slightly higher rate of fire in exchange for lower magazine capacity. It has three rounds instead of five in each magazine and costs six AP less to shoot in vats, compared to other Sniper Rifles of 32 AP versus 38 AP. It's now time for Smuggler's Edge. Now, once you have access to the Citadel, all you need to do is visit the B-Ring section. It is found in perfect condition in Elder Lion's personal safe. Now the safe is locked with a very hard lock difficulty. Or it can be opened via Elder Lion's terminal, which unfortunately also it has a very hard difficulty. Now by chance if you have dog meat with you, you could tell him to find you a weapon and he will bypass the safe and obtain the weapon for you. The smuggler's end shoots twice as fast outside of vats and does six more damage per shot than the regular standard laser pistol. This weapon has a weight of 2 compared to the standard version 3 and also has an additional 150 health points. Now it's time to talk about Stab Happy. I love Stabby time. Uh, I believe that's my weapon to talk about. It's a melee weapon there, Rick Dolphin, and it's pronounced Stab Happy. Okay, Arnie, I guess it's your turn. Stab Happy is the other unique combat knife I told you about from earlier. It is found on a radar inside the raid shack just east of the Bethesda ruins. With its low AP requirement of 17, a player with a high agility can deliver a good deal of damage with only a single round of vats. By combining luck, finesse, and the ninja perk in the various ways, Stab Happy will critical strike 100% of the time. The weapon also damages limbs at a slightly increased rate. Now, we're gonna talk about Sydney's 10mm Ultra submachine gun. Obviously, I'm here to tell you that Sydney owns this weapon. It can be obtained by either killing her, letting her die, or during the quest stealing independence, or finishing this quest and afterwards giving her a note from Little Moonbeam's father. FYI, this note can be found in the Statesman's Hotel. Sydney's 10mm Ultra SMG does two extra points of damage per shot and holds 20 more rounds of ammunition in the magazine when compared against the base 10mm SMG, which also allows it to do substantially more damage per second when reloading times are considered. The next weapon is known as the Break. The Break is found on a pool table in the center of Paradise Falls, next to the roasting Brahmin near the entrance to Eulogy's Bad. Although not a highly damaging weapon, the break has a rapid attack allowing many blows to be landed quickly. When acquiring the weapon, you can pick it up without worrying about stealing it because it is not owned by any character and thus picking it up will not count as stealing. Alright player, we're moving on to the kneecapper. This weapon can be found in Girder Shade and it can be obtained from Ronald Lauren. Fun fact, it is possible to obtain two kneecappers. The first by pickpocketing it from Ronald Lauren while he's in Girder Shade and the second by collecting another four from his corpse if he is sent to Nuka Cola plant using dialogue from the Black Widow perk. The kneecapper deals much more damage and is significantly more accurate than the regular sawed off. The kneecapper deals damage through raw power alone, since it does not deal any critical hit damage. It looks like it's my turn again. The weapon this time I'll be talking about is the Shocker. Now the Shocker is inside the flooded metro west of Arlington Library. Now to find the weapon inside the flooded metro is quite simple. Just follow the video you see before you. <sighs> be warned, there's my Mire lurks all over the place, and it's up to you to go and destroy them. If you're struggling to kill the Mire lurks, then get stronger! Once you make it to the room where the Shocker is found, be careful before you go in there. I only say this because there's traps. There's a trip wire right in front of you before you even go through the door, and it's rigged to a shotgun. You trip the wire, and you're gonna get a buckshot to the chest. I'll also add that the Shocker is especially effective in combat against robotic enemies, dealing nearly double bonus damage. Have fun, you Using this weapon against robots, you'll disable them no problem. <laughs>
Uh, the next weapon on the list is the Tenderizer. It is located inside the Anchorage Memorial in the utility room with the broken door. To find the door, enter the memorial service entrance on the east side of the memorial. At the junction, turn left to find the second door on the right. The door can be fixed by finding the door component, but a lockpick or science skill of 50 is required to be able to open the safe in which the door component is stored in the top level of the building. One can look behind the Nuka Cola dispenser to obtain the pass code for the computer in the same room which will then unlock the safe a repair skill of 35 or higher is required to fix the door with the help of the component without the component a repair skill of 95 is required given its name ability and location the tenderizer it is likely this weapon was originally used to literally tenderize my looks now it's time to talk about the terrible shotgun now this beast of a weapon is carried by smiling jack he's a non-hostile raider merchant found in evergreen mills now now, Smiling Jack can either be killed for it with no karma loss, or it can be reverse pickpocketed. Or if you're creative as Richtofen was, simply punch Smiling Jack. He'll get offended, he'll shoot you, you take a weapon out, shoot it out of his hands and vats, and quickly pick it up. Hey player, quick tip, after you shoot the weapon out of his hands, don't forget to put your weapon away, that way he'll no longer be hostile. Now this unique variant of the combat shotgun has the second highest damage of all weapons in the small guns category. The weapon has a far larger spread than normal shotguns, and full damage is only done if all pellets hit, making it most effective in close quarters. We now move on to the final melee weapon found in the base game of Fallout 3, Vampire's Edge. The Vampire's Edge belongs to Vance and can be found in a sword cabinet in his room at Moresti Metro Station and important location during the Blood Dies quest. The cabinet is a hard level lock to unlock via lock picking. Vance carries the key to the cabinet and may be pickpocketed, but he is a difficult target to pickpocket unnoticed even with a stealth boy active. The key can of course also be looted from his corpse. Now the Vampire's Edge does slightly more damage than the regular Chinese officer sword. It also weighs only 1 pound compared to 3 pounds. Due to the very low weight, fast attack speed, high critical chance and good durability, the Vampire's Edge is amongst the best melee weapons in the game. Despite its lower base damage value compared to other unique melee weapons. Alrighty then, now it's time to talk about vengeance, another great energy weapon. A big energy weapon. Uh, Richtof and Vengeance is classified as a big gun in Fallout 3. Oh, it is? Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. It's still a laser weapon in my eyes. Well, as I was saying, Vengeance is a big gun. Now, Vengeance can be found in the Deathclaw Sanctuary, which is located in a mountain west of Paradise Falls near the Potomac and southwest from Fort Constantine, right next to the broadcast tower KB-5. The sanctuary outside has a small number of Deathclaws, and around 10 reside in the sanctuary itself. There is also usually an enclave outpost close to the entrance. Now the weapon itself is found in the southeast of the sanctuary and is located next to sometimes in what is literally a pool of blood, surrounded by a group of green mushrooms and mutilated human remains under a rock formation. The opening to the rock formation is facing away from one's approach direction, so listen for dripping sounds as water drips from the roof in the rock formation. Vengeance has one of the highest DPS ratings of all automatic weapons in Fallout 3 and can easily slaughter most opponents. Like all Gatling lasers, it runs on electron charge packs. Hoorah! On to the Victory Rifle. The Victory Rifle can be found at Rockbreaker's Last Gas, in an abandoned shack up high on the clifftop. Getting it will require a lockpick skill of 100. There is unfortunately no key or computer terminal to open the locker. However, if you have dog meat in your party, just tell him you need to find a weapon and he'll bypass through the locker. While identical in damage to the Sniper Rifle, the Victory Rifle has triple the item HP and knocks down targets with critical hits. However, it pays for this ability with a reduced critical multiplier of 3. We move on to the Vesa Weifel. Now the Vesa Weifel can be found in Little Lamplight. You need to look for the little boy. His name is Billy. He offers to sell his unique laser rifle to you in Little Lamplight for 500 caps because he has been kicked off the scavenger team and no longer goes out on patrols. So of course he no longer needs the gun. With sufficient barter skill, you can haggle the price down to 250 caps. If you have the child at heart perk, you can obtain the Vesa Weifel for free with no option to pay anything for it. While I 
identical in appearance to the laser rifle. It does five more damage and also comes equipped with a larger magazine, with 30 shots instead of the standard 24. It also has 80% more item health than the standard laser rifle, with 800 more hit points. All right, player, now it's time for me to tell you about the Zhuanglong Assault Rifle. Now, the weapon itself is found on Prime's body in the diner near Jerry Street Metro Station. Prime will not spawn until the Jig's Loot Unmarked quest is completed. After completing all the puzzles in the Museum of Technology, the Zhuang Long Assault Rifle spawns on Prime's body. One must complete this quest in order for Prime, and thus the gun as well, to spawn. Now if you want to know both the locations for these terminals as well as the codes on each terminal for this quest, look no further than to my right. Rick Dauphin himself went to the Museum of Technology, and once he reached the museum he found all the locations of the terminals and codes for each terminal while he was there. Thanks Rick Dauphin. You're welcome Dempsey. Now the Zhuang Long Assault Rifle is a general purpose automatic firearm. Chambered for the same 5.56 rounds as other assault rifles, it is the overall most powerful weapon in this class. The Zhuang Long has the same AP cost, spread, and critical multiplier as all other assault rifles. It also has the same low durability as regular Chinese assault rifles, being the second most fragile assault rifle in the game. The Zhuang Long has the highest base damage of any automatic conventional firearm, as well as the highest non-critical damage per second of all weapons affected by small guns. It also features a modified 36 round magazine, 12 round higher than all the other assault rifles. We finally made it to the last letter of the alphabet, Z. And of course, I'm talking about the Zurong V418 Chinese pistol. The Zurong pistol can be found in LOB Enterprises, in the CEO's office in the secure case, on his desk in the east wing of the building, behind a very hard locked door requiring a lockpick skill of 100. The key to the case is inside the desk. It is also possible to reach the case by moving along the edge of the destroyed top floor until reaching the other side of the locked door. Now the Zurong pistol fires slower than a regular Chinese pistol and does the same four points of base damage per shot, but has an incendiary effect that adds to its exceptionally low damage over the course of five seconds. It has the second longest range of all incendiary weapons and enemies killed with this pistol will often explode into dozens of flaming chunks. Its damage per second is actually lower than a regular Chinese pistol without considering reloading times. And that, my friends, is all the unique weapons found in the base version of Fallout 3 within the capital wasteland. Unless I'm forgetting about one weapon in particular. Aesthetically, you'll probably not like this at all, but of course, here, viewers, I am talking about the regular Alien Blaster. Now, the reason I believe that the Alien Blaster itself is a unique weapon is because there's no other location for you finding an Alien Blaster. Unless, of course, you own some of the DLC content packages within Fallout 3. So I, the good doctor, will tell you all about where to find the Alien Blaster. Now, the Alien Blaster can be located due north of the MDPL-13 power station and northwest of the Greener pastures disposal site. The blaster can be found next to a body of a dead alien lying a few feet away from the crashed spaceship. There are also 120 alien power cells found at the site. A word of warning to you also, if you have the Mothership Zeta DLC installed, if you even come too close to the alien crash site, you will be, uh, what's the word you Americans call it, sucked up into space. And you will need to do the DLC before you can return to Earth to pick up the weapon. Now I hope you have enjoyed the a video of all four of us telling you where you can find all the unique weapons. Yeah, uh, Rick Dauphin, I'm pretty sure they are actually. It's just uh, they never expected four amazing people like us to tell them where each weapon is. Yeah, you know, I gotta admit, I'm still excited from it all. It was actually really fun telling you all where the weapons are. <laughs> you know, I'm with Broly on this one. It was really fun showing you all where you can find the unique weapons. I hope we get to see you all again next time. We look forward to seeing you all again. Remember to subscribe Subscribe to Aesthetically's channel to hear more voice impressions. And also don't forget to like the video if you like what you saw. Because if you don't, I'll tear you to shreds. Oh no, viewer, I'm sorry. <laughs> he won't do such a thing. Bye-bye.